In this short video, I'll show you how to create a simple pro-level sticky navigation header in the free version of Elementor. Now, normally this element only exists in the paid pro version, but with a simple extra free plugin, we can get the same results for free. So let's go. So for this tutorial, I'll just assume you already have Elementor installed on your WordPress website and you've already got some pages built. So let's go from there and get creating. Okay, so here we are inside of your WordPress dashboard. And the first thing we need to do, obviously I said before, you need to already have some pages built for your site because we need those in order to build the menu, which you do inside of WordPress. So let's go down to appearance and menus. And we're just gonna make a really simple header menu and a really simple footer menu. So starting off with, uh, let's just go ahead and rewrite this and let's name it header menu. And here we're just gonna make sure we have all of all the pages you have are over here. They're either arranged by most, most recent. I'm just gonna click on view all. That way we have all the pages over here. And you just want them to be in the right order you would like them to appear in in your navigation. So there's a few things here. I'm actually gonna remove home because we'll link to that in a different way. Privacy policy, that'll be in the footer, so we're gonna remove that. This one is trash, I'll remove that. Schedule a consultation, I'll remove because that's gonna be a call to action button. Terms and conditions, remove. Okay, so these are the main items I want to be in the header navigation. And something cool too, you know how when you go on um, navigation menus and you see, sometimes you'll hover over one item and then uh, there, a drop down will appear on top of that. The way you would do that, let's say we wanted pricing to be a sub menu under about us. All we do is we just drag it over like that and it becomes a sub item, but we don't really wanna do that, so we'll do this. And let's say we ever wanted to change our text that we wanted to appear in the navigation. Uh, navigation labels how we would do that. So, so, you know, this text would appear instead, but I'm just gonna put it back. Okay, so now, since it's the way we want it, I'm just gonna click on Create Menu. Simple as that. Now, I wanna create a simple footer menu. So I'm gonna click where it says Create a New Menu. I'm gonna call this footer and then create menu. Okay, from here, we're gonna choose the items we want to appear down at the bottom. Usually these are things that are like less important to a conversion, but you still wanna include. I'm gonna click on view all. So things like privacy policy, terms and conditions, you know, that kind of thing. So basically you're just choosing, you're checking the ones you want and then you click on add to menu and it just brings them all over. And then you can change the order if you want but I'm gonna put it back and then just click on save menu. Okay, so now we can start thinking about actually making uh, the look uh, and the design of our headers and footers, but first we need a plugin. So you should already have Elementor on your site. That's how you would have made these pages to begin with. But we're gonna go down to plugins and add new because normally you need Elementor Pro to do headers and footers the right way with like uh, where it pulls in the information from your menus, but we have a workaround like I promised. So what we're gonna search for is called, just gonna type in Elementor header, and then it's this one, Elementor header, footer, and blocks template. So I'm gonna click on install now, and then on activate. All right, simple as that. Okay, so let's start by making our header. So we're gonna go over to appearance, header, footer, and blocks, and then on add new. And we'll choose header, and we'll say display on, we'll just say entire website to make it easy. And then we'll, we'll click on edit with, oh actually we wanna title this first. And then edit with Elementor. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna assume that you already know how to work with Elementor. I'm not gonna go over all the basics of that, but I think you, if, if you're finding this tutorial, you probably have used it before. So I'm just gonna go and click on the plus sign. And then I'm gonna choose a three column layout for the header. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put your logo here, the navigation menu here, and then your call to action button over here. So I'm gonna choose uh, the widget icon over here, the, the little grid, and I'm gonna drag an image right into the first column. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna choose, when we installed the header footer blocks plugin, it came with a new set of widgets. So I'm gonna collapse basic and pro and general. And now we have header and footer blocks. These are all the, the widgets we get. So I'm gonna choose navigation menu and I'm gonna drag it right into the middle here. And then here's where we can choose which menu we're gonna call up. So remember we did two, we did the header and footer. So I'm gonna choose the header. And remember how we already chose which pages are gonna go there? It's calling it right up and there they are. And then I'm gonna choose a button for the third column. So that is under basic. So drag the button right on over there. 
And obviously none of this looks that great so far, so we're just gonna go ahead and, and get everything styled. So first of all, let's choose the image. So click that and then click on choose image. And here's where you would drag your logo file over to the stage. I already have one here. So I'm gonna click on that and then insert media. And then I'm probably gonna choose alignment over on the left. And then here's what you can do too. You can always drag the columns around so that things can go into more like more or less the place you want them to be. So let's say you had many more navigation items, you would obviously want to give it much more space. So the first thing I, I want to do is make sure everything is centered in the vertical space here. So I'm gonna click on the whole section and under layout, I'm gonna to go to vertical align middle and then let's go over some options we have here. So I'm gonna click on this icon and we can change the size of it. So I think this actually looks fine, but what if we wanted to make it slightly smaller, we would just go down to custom and you know, I might type in 100 and see what that looks like. I think maybe it already was 100. Let's do 75 and apply. Okay, that looks pretty good to me actually. I think I like that a little bit better. And then the other thing you wanna do too is you definitely wanna link this to your homepage. We, that's always good practice to make sure your logo will link back. So make sure that's clicked and then go under link and then custom URL. And for the homepage, all you're gonna do is type in a forward slash. And I'm gonna click on apply here and we're good to go. And then, so the next thing we wanna do is style our navigation menu. So just make sure that's clicked. And then let's click on style. So there's lots of things we can do here. We can play with the horizontal padding, you know, giving them more space between. And since we only have three items, that might be a good idea. I think it probably looks better this way. And there's an alternate way to do because notice how what that does is it also gives padding to the edges. But let's say you just wanted to do the space between and not change how far it is off the edge. You can just do space between that way and that works as well. And then see what, what happens when we put our uh, cursor over it. So we can change the effect. So that's link hover effect. Right now it's basically none. It just changes the color. But we can do an underline, which looks like this. We could do overline, which is basically the same thing, just goes over. We could do double line, which does both. We could do framed, which is like this, or text, which basically just makes the text go bigger. I think I like, for this one, I like underline. And then you can make the animation whatever you want. You can make it slide. So rather than just, you know, it can just kind of slide into place. I think that looks pretty nice. And then of course we can change the typography. We can change the font, the colors. So I'm just gonna click on that. And let's choose a nice simple font here. I like Montserrat the best for that. And then weight, we can make it bold, less bold. I'm just gonna choose normal. We can transform it to all uppercase or all lowercase, or just the first word capitalized. I'm just gonna leave it at that. And then from there, you know, we can change the text color to whatever we want to. You can choose whatever might be in your color picker already, or you can just choose a black or a dark gray, it's up to you. But then for the hover, you wanna choose a color that the text turns to when you mouse over it. Now, if you've got this little line under, underneath here, you may not wanna change the text color as well, but you can if you want to. You would just click on hover, and then you would make all those changes over here. So let's say we didn't want red. Let's say we wanted a blue more to match this. I'll just click that. And now we've changed it to the blue. Now, what I think I might wanna do though, is I think I want to center all this text in the middle. So go up to content and then layout, and I'm gonna choose the center option here. Okay, next we wanna talk about the button. So let's go ahead and click on that. And whatever the text you want it to say, if it's whether it's click here or you know, schedule your free consultation. And if it's that long, you might wanna think about pulling it out so there's it doesn't go on two lines. I'm actually gonna give it a little bit more room because we might make that all uppercase. But then you wanna set your link to it. So choose the page that you want uh, people to, if it's schedule a consultation, wherever it is you wanna send them, just make sure you're linking to it right here. And then we can also change the size of it. So this is small, but we could do medium, which I think I like better. And I'm also going to align it to the right. So again, this one is aligned to the left, this one is centered, and this is aligned to the right. That way everything is gonna feel nice and centered in the end. But let's say we don't want the red color, we would just go up to style. And here's where we change the background color and the text color, and there are two states, because when you hover over it, it can change color. So let's start with the normal color. Let's do the background color. I'm gonna do kind of a, a, gr a yellow green, and then I'll probably change the text color to much darker to read better. And then I might want the hover to be kind of a, a darker version of this. So then let's choose hover, 
and I'm gonna choose the background color. I'm gonna choose the same green, but then from there, I'm just gonna choose a little lower on it. That way it gets darker, see that? And then the text color, I'm gonna make white. So here's what happens when we mouse over it. All right, pretty happy with that, but I definitely wanna change the font here. So I'm gonna to go to typography, and I'm gonna change that to the Montserrat font there, and transform, I'm gonna make it uppercase, just to give it a little bit more weight. And I might make the, the size of the text slightly smaller. Well, I actually think, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, and the last thing I wanna do is just make sure there's about the same amount of space between th this edge and this edge, just so everything is centered nicely. So just eyeball it, that looks about right to me. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do now is make sure this is also gonna look good on mobile. So uh, Elementor makes it really easy to switch between the two views. So just go down here where it says responsive mode and there's a little icon of a computer screen. I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna click on mobile. So now we've got this to play around with. So see what it's doing, it's just stacking the columns, which is not what we want. So let's just deal with each column individually. So just click on the first one on this little gray box and we'll do column width, let's make this 25%. Then we'll choose column two, and we'll make that 25% as well. And then we'll choose column three, and we'll make that 50%. Okay, so you'll notice that on mobile view, uh, the whole menu has been shifted into this basically hamburger icon that people have to tap to see uh, the menu, which is pretty standard on mobile menus. So uh, what we need to do now is just make sure everything looks good it, when people tap on this. So I'm gonna click on it, and it looks good except for I don't like how close it is to the edges. So with that selected, let's just go to Style. And notice you've got this little mobile uh, icon popping up here. That means you can style all these things independently of the desktop view. So it's only gonna change on mobile, not it's not gonna change what it looks like on desktop. So let's see what this one does, yeah, see that looks much better when, you, we, when we push it out from the side a little bit. Yeah, so I think this looks much nicer. So from there, I'm just gonna click on Publish and our header is ready. But remember, we still have to do a footer, so let's go ahead and click on this little hamburger icon there and then exit to Dashboard. So now what we're gonna do is go to Appearance, Header, Footer, and Blocks, and then Add New, and we're gonna call this Footer Menu. And we're gonna select the option of Footer. And we're also gonna say display on entire website and then edit with Elementor. Okay, now this look, should look familiar, but this time we're doing the footer. So just go ahead and choose the plus and we'll do a three column layout for the footer because what we're gonna want is your logo and company name and information here as well as social icons. Then the simple navigation menu of all the other pages that we did not put up top and then a Google map over here for, for better local SEO. So let's go ahead and choose an image for the logo. We'll just drag that there. We will then drag a heading. This will be your business name and then a text editor. And that's gonna show your, your basic name, address, and phone number right there, as well as we're gonna search for social icons. We're gonna drag that right underneath that. Then we will collapse basic, pro, and general, and we're gonna bring a navigation menu to the middle and a Google map over here. So under basic, we have Google maps, just drag that guy right over there. All right, so first of all, everything's really close to the top edge here. So I'm gonna click the whole section and under advanced, I'm gonna give us a little bit of padding within it. So I'm going to unlink the values. So we're just dealing with the top and bottom by themselves. And I'm gonna give them both 50. That already feels much better. Let's get some more breathing room now. So first, let's change out this image to our logo. So just click the image and then click on shoes image. And we'll just use the same one we used up top. Click on insert media and we will align that to the left. And then right here, we'll put in the business name. And of course we can change the styling of that up here. Just go to typography. And then here you would choose whatever font you wanted, but we'll just keep it as is for now. And then here, what we would do is type in So we just have the phone number and address. I'm just gonna go ahead and bold those things right there. And now we've got our social icon. So we, you have a few choices with these, so let's choose that. It's kind of a compound element here where you, you have everything all in one spot. So you can obviously choose which ones you want. You're not limited to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. 
you know, you could add another one and then just click on icon library and you would just look for what you're looking for. So like Instagram, type that in and then insert. And then if one of these didn't fit, like if you weren't on Twitter, you just X that out and it goes away. And here's something interesting. So what you can do is either choose the official color because like Facebook has its blue, YouTube has its red. Instagram, not sure they have the black there, but that's okay. I don't think we can do gradients here. So the other thing you could do if, if you don't want the official color, if you want it to feel more branded for you, you would just choose custom and then you would choose you know, the primary color. And then if you wanted it not to be white, if you wanted it to be black on top of it or whatever, you could do that as well. I'm just gonna leave it on white though. But I'm just gonna put it back to official color just to make it easy and we're gonna line this on the left. And if you go up to style, there's a lot of things you can do here. You can make them smaller. If you wanted them to be less obtrusive, you can give it more space between them. And then uh, what you would do in order to link them up, you just go over under content and under Facebook, you know, on each one of these, you would just put in the link to your profile. Easy as that. Okay, so moving on to column two, uh, this menu, it's gonna automatically default to having them be in, a, in one line horizontally, but what we actually want is a layout where they are vertical, more like that. So, and what I'm also gonna do here, oh, and by the way, uh, it lets you choose which menu you want. So remember we did a header and a footer. So if, if it showed the wrong one for whatever reason, just go under content menu, and then just choose the right one there. It's pretty easy. But I actually want a header above this. So I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this header. I'm gonna do copy, and I'm gonna do a, a paste and then I'm just gonna drag it right on top. And I'm just gonna call this more pages. Pretty simple. And then you'd go on the map over here and here's, you would just literally type in your address. Or if you have, uh, if your business is already in Google My Business, you can pretty much just put in your business name right there. But this is a fictitious business, so it's not gonna do it. I'm just gonna put in, but it's also a fictitious address, so. It's probably not gonna really show anything here, but if it was a real address, it would have a little map pin and it would be a nice way for Google to uh, verify that you are where you say you are. And I might wanna round this out by just vertically spacing everything in the middle so this isn't floating way up here. So I'm gonna choose the section and then layout and vertical align middle. All right, just a few more styling things here. So if you wanted to make this a background color, sometimes people like to make their footers darker. You would just click on the section, go into style, and then background type. Just choose whatever background color you think fits. You know, I like, I think I like something like this. I think that looks nice. And of course, then you would just change your text to be able to stand out on this. All right, just that simple. Now, one thing that people like to do in their footers as well a lot is put a little copyright line. So let's do that, let's finish it out. Uh, just text editor, drag that right. Let's just do it right underneath the, actually let's do it underneath this right here. I'll just do a nice little copyright line. Okay, then we would just style that. So make it white. And then usually the this kind of copyright line can be really small. I like to do like maybe an eight point. And wait, just gonna make it normal. All right, I actually don't like it here though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it right under here. I like that better. All right, from there, I'm just gonna click on a publish and then let's check it out. Let's see if it's working. Okay, so before we see if it's working or not, I do wanna mention, cause I just tried to do this and I kind of messed something up. So go to each of one of these, the header and the footer and make sure that this was saved, that it's a header entire website, and then you might wanna check this as well, enable layout for element or canvas template. So make sure that's checked as well, and then click on update. Okay, so now as you can see, we've got our header working just fine, and our footer as well. So now that you've got your header in place, I wanna invite you to my free training masterclass that's gonna show you how to create and launch your own client generating website. And we'll be using Elementor, but also I'll be guiding you through what should actually go on your website and what to leave out to be really persuasive and effective in automating a consistent client list every single day of the week. So click right here to save your seat and I can't wait to share all the good stuff with you.